Hey guys, I have another video here. Uh, this one is called Greed is Good on Code Wars. It says, Greed is a dice game played with five or six, um, five six-sided dice. Your mission should be to choose to accept the dice to score through according to these rules. You'll be given an array with five six-sided dice values. Three ones is a thousand, three sixes is six hundred, three fives are five hundred, so on and so forth, corresponding values. Uh, one one and it could be any number of single ones. So if there's two single ones, they could be 200, which is what tripped me up for a minute because it didn't really express that. I thought that if there was two ones left over, then one of the ones would be 100. And for fives, it would be 50 points. Uh, single dice can only be counted in, once in each roll. For example, a given five can only count as part of a triplet, contribute in the 500, or as a single 50 points, but not in the same roll. And they give you some examples and such here as well as no scores. So right off the bat we know we're working with an array. I guess I probably should. My code's massive honestly. But I have such trouble making it smaller since I'm newer I guess so I don't know a lot of the available things out there. But we know we're starting with at least this. Now we know we need a points variable or just something to check it, I just used a points variable because it could be anything. And we know we're comparing it to whether there's three or one, so we know we need a count of how many there are. So I made um, an object here. I guess I could just uncomment the whole object, right? So I made an object here with one through six. Uh, technically, you might not need to do that. I initially had a for loop that would insert into the object if it existed in the dice roll. So like if the dice roll didn't have any twos rolled, there would be no two in here. And then I was gonna try to loop through that, but it got too confusing because of all the different point values and stuff and I was like I don't know what's going on so I just put one for every single thing so I can make every single equation out so it could calculate all the different point values so we know we're gonna need to add to this object uh, anytime we come through so I just made a loop now I could have done a for each I initially did and then I just switched it to this just to see if it would work the same because I Personally, I'm not a huge fan of for each, just because the way it fits in the the code for me right now just looks awkward. And then I get kind of worried if it doesn't work. So I just used this loop, but I did make an old one with a for loop, or a for each loop, which I deleted, just so I can conceptualize this better. Uh, and all it's doing is whenever the dice comes in, it checks the object for that dice and then does plus equal one because they're all already zero. So now we need to score it. So this is all gonna be the, hold on, sorry about that. Most of these are gonna be the same. Like the four, three, and two, these are all the same equations. So we know that if we get six and divide it by three, and it's greater than or equal to one, meaning that it's divisible by three. I didn't think I, um, I wasn't sure I needed this, but I did it. I could have probably just done count six or whatever or something, but I did let new six equal count six minus count six modulo three. Uh, that way we get new six being only what's actually divisible by three. Uh, no extras, because let's say four came in here and then we'd have an extra four. And if we do four divided by three, it'd be some weird fraction. So this just gets rid of whatever extra there is. So what's left is only divisible by three. And then I did points plus equals new 6 divided by 3 times 600, which is scoring. The same goes for the 4, the same goes for the 3, and the 2. Where it gets funky is the 1 and the 5. 
So for the five, I just, or for both the one and the five, they're the same exact code. I didn't switch anything up once I saw that it worked. But we'll look at this one right here. So I did, if the count of five is greater than zero, then if five modulo three equals zero, means it, meaning it's perfectly divisible by three, then just do um, this function out, which is the same as the other ones, just dividing it by three and then doing that times its point value. The only reason I did it th this way was because it was, I started nesting too many if statements and it was getting really annoying, so I didn't want to have to nest more if statements inside of this thing with their own if else's and it would have just been crazy. Uh, then if this is not true, that means that either there's an, a number being passed in that's not divisible by 3 like 4, or it's less like a 1. So I did else if count divisible by th or divided by 3 is greater than or equal to 1. Uh, then we're going to want to go ahead and still do the similar equation to last time. This whole part's still the same. But then we're also going to want to tack on counts 5 modulo 3 times 50. So if it was a 4, there'd be a 1 after this part, and then 1 times 50. If it was a 5, there would be 2 times 50 to make this 100, and then adding it to the original value. And then if none of these two are true, so if whatever number it is, um, divided by 3 is less than 1. It'll come down here and just do whatever number of dice there are times the 50 um, after being divided by 3. This probably wasn't necessary. And this just ensures that it's not a complete 0 value, so we know that, so we don't need to worry about it being 0. And so that's the same thing for the 1. And then after all this, I just did return points. And as you can see, it's in my past solutions, so everything checks out. And let me see what else I could show you guys. I'm trying to get to the actual... Here we go. So this already works. It's in my past solutions. But look how simple it could be. I don't even know what this is. I don't know what that's about. Oh, I see. So he has an array up here. So dice for each function x. Zero, zero, zero. I don't know what this x minus one plus plus is about. Not fully certain what that's about. I kind of get this stuff a little bit. I wouldn't have made this. It clearly makes much easier code than what I did, but I, I don't fully understand how he's jumping around in these, but it's definitely clever. So I'm going to upvote that. It's interesting. But you can see it could be a little bit easier than what I did. I think mine's a little bit more digestible or like easy to pick up off the bat. But that's how you solve the problem. Um, it's really it. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Like, subscribe, and have a great day.